Well, so, but, but let me let me be real here. I was honest and I got on this live, not this one, but I got on live when I made my first wire hair, right? And she had a little tail. People were losing their mind. Oh my God, she got a tail. Why didn't you crop it? I said, yo, you people in one breath are saying you're not supposed to crop tails and you're not supposed to lie. But then in the, in the end, my DMs were full. You should have cropped that tail. It looks better. Nah, I didn't because I want you to see the truth. I'll bring her to a male that don't got a tail. That's our, pro our, our prerogative as a breeder is to incre increase the health and the structure of the dogs. There is no perfect dogs, right? I'm okay with being like that. None of the pinks from the litter that Sheree had in Mountain Shadow had tails. None of them. They have no muzzle. You've seen the dog. There's no tail, no muzzle. One of the girls has like a little bit of a, like a, like, it's like a stub, but it's not a real tail. It's, you can see it's not a tail. It's not the truck. But look, but look, even though they didn't produce tails, just knowing what we know about the DNA and how it was put together, depending on what version of pink you have is going to tell it's you. It's from the pug line. So, I, so, I mean, that's so, still going to throw it. That's, so, you know, so. the pug line, that's going to throw a tail, but the Pekingese really going to throw a tail. You know what I'm saying? So, yes. Yeah. This is this is this is for the people that that say that the the DNA people are scammers and all this shit. Look, this is what this is why we're doing this live so we don't mislead anybody. And, yeah. You know, basically there is no guarantee. Sometimes, bro, it depends on it depends on on the dog. It depends on what 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 was you know dibbled and dabbled in to make this certain dog. It depends on a lot of things, bro. And uh, a lot of people will not say this on live. There's a lot of people in here that do have a lot of tails and they be docking all the time and let's be honest bro a lot of you people be flogging on the air and saying oh, oh my shit is no tails and you be seeing motherfuckers with tails anyway well, listen but, it's but just look. gonna take selective fucking breeding bro yeah you that's just it have to know what you gotta you have to really be a breeder not a fucking have consumer to, so, a lot of these people call themselves breeders but they'll run away from something that you can breed away from hey red I'm still getting hit up on how do I breed around Brindle and this, that, and the other thing from people that have been in the game for two years. And you're calling yourself a breeder, you need to take the time to understand because that means that you can't fix structure. You don't understand how to work around structure. And that's why everybody's like, oh, the market. Nah, the market's fine for the, for the correct dogs. They're moving. They're still moving. Good, correct, structured dogs, good DNA dogs, they're still moving. Just, hey, just so the, people, the people that's not Hold on real quick, my bad for that. Hold on. The people that's not creative and the people that's that, you know, that's just breeding just to say that they have dogs, those are the people that aren't making money anymore. The creative people, the people that know how to stay relevant, and the people that just know how to flat out fucking breed are the people that's making money. It, it used to just be, oh, if you got a fluffy, that's an automatic bag. If your fluffy ain't got substance, it ain't it ain't it no more. Isabella. Everybody got fucking Isabella now. If your Isabella or Rojo or whatever structure ain't right, they're not fucking with it. So really, the market's not bad. It's just not easy. The quality the is not there in 90% of the camps. So now the it's quality get the is just not there. Everybody I, got it now, so let's get it better. We got a, we got a lot of people asking what a caramel pink is, a caramel pink. Uh, a, a caramel pink, and I know I've seen a couple of people on the comments saying it's a black and tan. Yes, caramel pink. Is a black and tan covered in pink. The reason it's a is that caramel color is because of the dark color under that um under that pink, basically. So yeah, he's ATA, one copy of blue, one copy of cream, and if you see the color, it's it looks kind of like a new shade. It looks kind of like a new shade. It's a caramel color, and if you look at the tan points, the tan points look kind of white. You know what I'm saying? So. That um, allele really does play into the pinks, though. That allele and the brindle, those two, those two things. I'm telling you right now, people, don't believe me. Believe me, I don't, I don't care. But I'm gonna tell you right now, the two things you guys need to focus on is the allele and brindle. In my personal opinion, the allele, that that solid A that you rocking with, is gonna help you. Um, double A Y is not a bad thing. A Y A T not a bad thing. Like you, everybody needs to relearn what what is good in the pinks because it's not the same as everything else. It's standard a different color. ball game, from what I'm understanding. Standard I'm still colors. Myself. Standard colors under a pink balances it out, basically. So basically, we all know how the Merle line works, right? Where it starts at 217 and goes up to 278, I think it is. So think of pink like this. The brand new Pekingese line, right, will be all the way to the right. It's like a 268 marrow, right? 
you can't really breed that with much. You got to go to a 219 or nothing, right, in order to be able to breed that. So mm -hmm. think of pink that way. The further you get away from the, the, the source, the more you can do pink to pink and stuff like that. And that's why everybody's got the misconception about the Pekingese. The, the structure's not there on most of the Pekingese line, and it's very close to the source. It's only the F3, F2, or F3. Yeah, exactly. So my thing is, that's it's not saying it's bad. Hill, yeah, it, it's not saying, hill. listen, some of my friends have some of these Pekingese studs. I'm, I'm fine with it. I just want them to be aware of who they're breeding to and what line, because then you have people that have F2 females because they didn't want to spend a bag, and they got a cheap F2, and they're complaining that they're getting tails and muscles. Bro. This is what it is that you, you, you know, and the pinks, you pay for quality. That's it because you're paying for those generations that the people, you know, that did the work, you know, my pinks are the most expensive on the market. And there's a reason because nobody has the generations that we have. Nobody now, does. There's a couple of now, people. I'm going to say this. I'm going to yeah. say this though. Yeah. You know, your generation of pinks, you know what I'm saying? The price probably the highest and all that, you know what I mean? But, from from the way that I brought the pink in, I you know I brought my pink in from uh you know from the husky toy which which is the pug line you know what I'm saying, um which is why a lot of the the toys or pinks I mean the huskies that carry pink you'll notice that bone is something that they need to work on. more so than a tail you'll get dogs that are lacking a little bone a little substance up front because it, it comes from the the you know the panda pug. Uh, that carries the pink gene, right? And can, so, I, can I can I cut cut you off real quick because somebody's wow. asking something in it. That I want I want to make sure that we we address this. Go ahead, go ahead. You never want to see ahead. red eyes in a pink. You never want to see a, a white dog with red eyes. Stay away from that. I don't care what anybody says. That is going to be a dog that's going to have health issues, and that is not something we want. We want to stay away from it. if it's got completely red eyes. If they have the red eye sheen like a lilac does, that's a different story. But completely white with red eyes. Those dogs are not healthy. I'll stand on that all day, every so day. Why, I'm sorry, Red, there to cut you, you off, bro. Why you say they're not healthy, though, good, Mark? What's, what, what's going to happen? That's true dogs, albino. Though. You ever see a lab rat? You ever see a lab rat with the red eyes and it's all white? Yeah, yeah. Those are true albinos. They don't – it's like albino horses, reptiles, anything. When they're truly absent of pigment – when they're truly absent of pigment and their eye color is red, the pigment actually plays in the health of the dog. When you take all pigment out, you you fucked up your dog. Excuse my language, people. You know, like I try to. You know, it, it's not good. It's very bad. It can actually the dog can die very early. They can have all kinds of uh, health so, issues. It, it's not good at all. I, so at I all. say this. I mean, that's probably a, a true albino dog like that. Correct. That, I wouldn't when, even consider that. They're thing. completely white so, with red eyes. That's that's. I mean, just like you know, remember back in the day, yeah, you get the albino like, kids. You know what I'm saying? They'll have hearing issues or they'll be deaf. You know what I mean? All kind of shit. The eyes are rolled around in the head and shit. I'm at, like, wait, you know for I mean? diets, all kinds of stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah because the color body the, parts and the shit. color actually plays a part in the hearing of the dog, so the less color Hearing, the has, sight, it, the pigment plays a lot of role in the development of the dog. So yeah. when it's devoid of pigment, you have big problems. That's why the only pinks I mess with are blue. So this, I, is, what, so this is what I'll say, right? So, so the way that I brought pink in, I brought pink in into a, a, I don't know how you say it correctly. It's either you're a hero or you're a hero. You're a zero. Yeah. You're a hero. Yeah. Right. I brought I'm a my hero. pink lines in. I brought my pink line. <laughs> That's yeah. how I brought my pink lines in. Yeah. I bred to a, a four generations, um, you know, line bred bitch from my yard. And I took her to, uh, you know what I'm saying? Jay, uh, not Jay-Z. I took her to Meats. You know, Meats was the first working court in the U.S. There was only like four four of us that bred to so me, Fernando, uh, I think Amanda and them, and then maybe one other litter, right? Yep. Nobody else bred to me. They closed him because he was he was he played key in, in producing what was next. Yes. Because the way he was producing, yep. right? And so um, um I, I I like the pink carriers I have. Bro, I'm I'm so excited to see what we do with the pink, like you know what I'm saying? Because you put her like, in the back? Amanda and them and, and my pink and even Amanda's them, you know what I'm saying? Like I feel like we we took a step forward with the pink and we we went even another generation away from the pink originally. So I think we we all put ourselves in a position to be able to produce better structure pinks. 
Instead yeah, of I, pink is one of those things that head. people are racing for, and, and I don't think they're doing it right. I think you're doing it the right way. I think that too many people are racing to get the visual pink, and they're not worried about structure. They're not worried about pedigree. They're not worried about the lines. And that's basically, I give my, I, you know, I give you the credit because you looked at that. My partner, Mountain Shadow, she did the same thing two, almost two years ago. When people weren't breeding to Jennifer's line because he carried Brindle, she was like, screw it. That dog is a good looking dog. You know, boom, boom, boom. And she foresaw what we, what we, what we have black, today black yeah. is what does like people people i think black is underrated in the dog game you know what i mean if you really know anything well you know it's coming blue, back man you're starting to see a lot of dogs is really, it's never now. left it never left bro blue is black blue is the de diluted black it's the same thing and we need blue to make lilacs you need blue to make uh, a a you need blue to make you know new shade isabella you need blue to, to really do a lot of different things i think blue is when we're talking combinations, dilution is needed when we're talking about changing any color, right? So mm -hmm. you take a black and tan and you put cream on top of that, double cream on a black and tan, that's a Gold. golden dog. You get a golden dog. So if you really pay attention to the dogs and everything that, you know what I'm saying, what we're doing now, you can't, I mean, I'm not surprised that the caramello came when you put double pink on top of black and tan. When you put double cream on top of black and tan, it looks different. You get what I'm saying? See, my girl's double Rojo carries one copy of blue, and she's got, like, the lightest caramello kind of color. She's, like, very, very light. Like, you would think that she would be darker, right? Yeah. She's not. She's got, like, the coolest little color on her. It's almost like a champagne-looking pink. It's really different, man. It really is different. She's beautiful. Like, like, And so I personally like the caramello pink. I think that's dope. And black and tans are my favorite color, like, in the Frenchie game, period. I've, uh, I think they look like little Rottweilers. So, like, it's a personal thing. I love them, love them, love them. So it's dope. So no. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Y'all say cream covers everything, right? So Cream will cover the pink. Cream does. Cream does not cover Husky, though. You can see panda spotting through cream. because Jay And it Z depends on what variation of cream you're rocking with. Now they have six creams, and there's some variations of cream that will let pigment through, where you can get a cream dog with black markings. So the cream that comes to the Huskies, it shows the markings. Now, there, even when we're talking pink, right, the pink uh, perch and snake, they got the pink koi. The koi markings show through the pink. Come on. Yeah, you know, a lot of people and even people that are breeding pinks for a while here have told us a lot of things, right? And we're finding that it's not true. Not that they're, not that they're um, wrong because they, they're giving us misinformation. is because there's a lot of conjecture. And we did the breeding, right? She did the breeding, and we wound up with all kinds of stuff that people said shouldn't happen. Um, you know, so... So that, you know, I mean, there's a lot. The pink is so new, guys. There's only like two or three people that have been doing it for a very long time that know all the secrets in and out. I'm going to give you guys everything I know of and that we've done and that we, you know, it, it, it's very, very different than what you'll hear from other people. But I'm going to tell you right now, I've done the research for now 10 months. We did our first breeding. I have my Pekingese fluffy girl that's pink. She's a F4, I think she is. So I'm not worried. I'm going to bring it to the pie, uh, pug line. I'll probably bring it to Caramello Pink, actually. I'm going to talk to Fernando offline. But uh, <laughs> she, she's only got one copy of Blue. she got one copy of Coco. And Fluffy, she carries Pink and Fluffy. That's a perfect per dog to bring to your boy. Like, that's perfect. Yep. Because I don't need testable and everything. Listen, I'm going to say this. If we being real, all the other breeds that are starting to get Pink and Fluffy, if you don't notice, there's a lot of dogs that you see that carry pink and they also carry fluffy. Pay attention. Mm -hmm. Look at the mouse. Look at the jowls of the dog. Look at the look at the muzzle. Look look at the way the mouth comes to a you know what I'm saying a point in, in in the mouth, right? Look look how long the body is. Now here's some characteristics for you to know which which direction the pink comes from, right? If you want to just look at the dog and be able to tell, long back, short legs, pink and knees. Yes. Yes. Yo, my my Pekingese girls are probably this far off the ground. She's good, and her back is kind of short for a Pekingese line. She's you know she's got like a twelve inch back, which is actually not that bad. But she's diesel, man. 
she has really got bone on her, so it's going to be a nice breeder. I'm going to bring her to the right stud, you know, and, and we're going to do that. That's the thing about being a breeder, right, Lilo? Like, you want to be a breeder. You don't want to be just a person pushing puppies. 